<sighs> I just don't know what to play. No deck can beat all of these options. Whoa, who's that handsome man in the well-lit location behind me? I'm the Fire King, and you don't need to worry about anything. Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts! I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. Whew! Let's take a well-deserved break from the decks from Valiant Smashers, shall we? I'm really not in any mood to get a jump on... Valmonica. Instead, let's figure out a structure that just hit shelves this week. Presenting Fire King. Fire! 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 So here's the list, adapted from some OCG tops. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is the number one place to go if you need a pack simulator, a card database, or want to read a wealth of strategy articles. They also post breakdowns and lists from every major TCG and Master Duel tournament, including the Master Circuit Series. Give them a look at www.ygopro. D-E-C-K.com. So with that, let's fiddle with Fire Kings. Fire Kings are a series of beast, beast warrior, and winged beasts that refuse to stop hitting themselves. These masochistic monsters all benefit from, and enable, popping. While they've never been meta-meta in the TCG, they've enjoyed a long stint of playability at the local and regional level, be it as a pure strategy on release with Garunix, as a splash in a pain-loving package of cards like Fire King Cosmo, or in a format with a lower power level like Duel Links, these BBWs just don't stay dead. Which is kind of the point of the whole archetype. But enough fluff! What can they accomplish? Well, as an archetype centered around a level 1 fire monster, they actually play incredibly nicely with the newly released Dia Bellstar cards, making use of not only my wife, but also a couple of snake eyes. By searching Ponyx, this deck can effortlessly cycle through a 1 card or a higher impact 1.5 card combo all the way to... Amphibious Swarmship Amblo Whale. Don't laugh! It'll make sense in context, I promise. So with that, let's get into the card by card. First, let's start out with the engine. We've got two copies of Sacred Fire King Garunix, which if your monster that was originally fire is destroyed by battle or card effect, can be special summoned from your graveyard if it was there when the monster was destroyed, or the hand even if it wasn't. If this card is normally special summoned, you can destroy a fire beast, beast warrior, or winged beast monster in your hand, deck, or face up field, except itself, and if you do, this card gains attack equal to half of the destroyed monster's attack it had there until the end of this turn. Next up, we've got three copies of Legendary Fire King Ponyx, which is... Just so cute. If your monster that was originally fire is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can special summon this card from your hand, and if it's normal or special summoned, you can add a Fire King spell trap from your deck to your hand. During the next standby phase after this card was destroyed and sent to the graveyard, add this card from your graveyard to your hand. Finally, the oldies were playing three copies of Fire King Avatar Arvata. When a monster effect activated while this card was on the field, you can negate the activation and destroy one other fire monster in your hand or field, and if this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can target a fire beast, beast, warrior, wing beast in your graveyard and special summon it, but its effects are negated and it's destroyed during the end phase. Also on three copies of High Avatar Kirin. During the main phase, if this is in your hand, you can destroy one other fire monster in your hand or face up field, and if you do, special summon this card. And if this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon a fire king monster from your hand or graveyard, except for Kirin, then destroy one card on the field. Fun fact, that's during the main phase. Not your main phase. It's kind of like Havness, if Havness was terrible. Fire King Avatar Hanuman says if a face up Fire King monster you control is destroyed by a card effect, you can special this card from your hand, and when a spell trap card effect is activated while this monster is on the field, you can negate the activation and destroy another fire monster in your hand or face up field. And finally, one copy of Bayrong. If a face up Fire King monster is destroyed by a card effect, you can special summon this card from your hand, and during the next standby phase after this card was destroyed by a card effect and sent to the graveyard, add a Fire King from your deck to your hand. Next, we've got our Dia Bellstar cards two of the Dark Witch, and one of Snake Eyes Flamberge dragon, which can target a face-up monster on the field or in either graveyard and put it face-up in its owner's spell and trap zone as a continuous spell, and during your opponent's turn, target a monster card, it is treated as a continuous spell on the field and special summoned it to your field, and if this card is sent from the hand or field of the graveyard, special summon two level 1 fire monsters from your graveyard, alongside Snake Eyes XL. If this card is normal or special summoned, you'll be adding a level 1 fire monster from your deck to your hand, usually by way of the sinful spoils into the little bird. You can send two face-up cards you control to the graveyard, including this, to especially Snake Eye from your hand or deck, except itself. After after that, we've got three copies of Sanctuary of the Fire King. When this card is activated,
activated, you can put an FKI from your deck face up in your field spell zone. And then once per turn, if a card in your field zone would be destroyed by a card effect, destroy a fire monster in your hand or face a field instead. Once per turn, if your opponent special summons a monster, Xyz summon a fire Xyz using only fire king monsters you control as material. After that, we've got Tanky, we've got the Sinful Spoils Hunter Fiend, sorry, I mean wanted Seeker of Sinful Spoils, two Fire King Island, and one Fire King Sacred Immolation. This card allows you to target the same number of Fire King monsters you control and cards your opponent controls, destroy them, and if a Fire King you control will be destroyed by a card effect, banish this card from your graveyard instead. And finally, we are on just the Snake Eye as our target. For Not Engine, we've got Ash, we've got Valor, we've got Called By, and we've got Infip, and in the extra, we've got a lot going. First is Zeus, Typhon, Dingirsu, Hamblow Whale, Access Code Talker, Unicorn, Selene, Hita, Sunlight Wolf, SP Little Knight, IP Masquerina, Link Rebo, and Salamand Great Almirage. But the star of the show is this Garunix Eternity. Hyang of the Fire Kings? If this card is Gazeez summoned, you can destroy all other monsters on the field. You can detach a material from this card to target a spell trap on the field, destroy it, and if you do, it gains 500 attack. And if this card is destroyed while it has material, you can special summon Fire King monsters from your graveyard up to the number of materials this card had. In the side, we've got three copies of Druus Worm, three Droll and Lockbird, two Lightning Storm, a Feather Duster, a Triple Tactics Talents, three a Triple Tactics Thrust, a Herald of the Abyss, and a Dimensional Barrier. So with that, let's jump into the games. Okay, I promised I would tell you why Amblo Whale's in the deck. But perhaps I can just show you. Our first match is up against Unchained, which should set your expectations high. We're going first, and we're going to begin with a copy of Wanted. We're going to grab from deck to hand a copy of Diabell Star, then activate Tanky in order to grab an Arvata to hand. We'll send the Tanky to the graveyard for Diabell Star, then activate the effect in order to set a copy of Snake Eye. We'll activate Snake Eye and get ourselves a copy of XL. XL is going to trigger here to get Little Birdie Boy from deck to hand. Then we'll activate the graveyard effect of Wanted to draw a card and normal summon this Ponix. Ponix is going to grab us the Continuous Spell, and the Continuous Spell is going to grab a Fire King Island. We'll then activate Fire King Island, popping this Ponix in order to grab you guessed it, High Garunix. We'll special summon that Garunix and trigger the effect in order to send Graveyard a copy of Kirin. Kirin will trigger here, bringing back the Ponix, and will activate the effect of the XL in order to summon a Flamberge. Link summon a copy of Sunlight Wolf and then activate Flamberge's Graveyard effect, bringing back Ponix and XL. We'll trigger the effect of the Sunlight Wolf in order to grab a Kirin and then go Mascarena and Amblo Whale. Set to and pass. This looks innocuous, but it's horrifying. Our opponent's going to begin with a copy of Dark Contract with the Gate. They will use it to grab Vice King Requiem, then fire off a Fenrir and a Twin Twister. Frustrating. No big deal. We're still in control. They're going to go for Vice Ice King Requiem and activate its effect, cycling this copy of the Dark Contract, and then triggering the effect of the Fenrir to grab a card to hand. They'll make a Machinex, then normal summon a Tour Guide. From here, we can Ash Blossom the Tour Guide. At point of resolution, they are going to go for the Fenrir, targeting the Amblo Whale, and we will Kirin. Kirin's going to send that Amblo Whale, and then afterwards, the Amblo Whale is going to trigger, as well as the effect of the Garunix in Graveyard. We'll bring back our copy of IP Masquerade and trigger the effect of the Garunix in order to send another Kirin, then trigger the Kirin effect to bring back Ponix, at which point our opponent will concede. So that's how the deck can perform on the play, but what does it do on the draw? Our opponent for game two is playing Earth Machine, and no one tell peeps this is... The reason I will never play Earth Machine, the hand you see in front of you. Oh boy, box in the opener again? Oh, <laughs> you shouldn't have. They're going to begin with a copy of Heavy Forward. Afterwards, going to normal sub with a copy of Makita Gearframe and uh, Ancient Gearbox notwithstanding, this hand is otherwise quite strong. They're going to go Unclass Spare in order to send a copy of Rune Force to the graveyard to make a Gear Gigant X. We're going to Valor that, and then at point of resolution, they're going to go ahead and fire off this copy of Triple Tactics Talents, look at our hand, and put that copy of Effect Valor back. From here, they're going to go into Brutal Dozer, activate the effect of the Brutal Dozer in order to summon from deck a Tunneler and then overlay for a River Stormer. They're going to go for River Stormer, grab themselves from deck to hand a copy of Regulus, and then summon that Regulus, set an Overdrive, and pass. As soon as available, they will use Overdrive to tag this River Stormer into a Citadel, but unfortunately, we are really excited to get our cards popped. We'll begin with a copy of Tanky. We'll normal summon this Arvata. We'll go for Wanted and grab ourselves a Diabell Star. We'll special that Diabell Star and activate the effect. Our opponent's going to go for Citadel here. We will activate the effect of Arvata, and they will activate Regulus. No, don't destroy my monsters. Oh, God. They're going to blow up our board at which point we can activate both the effect of the Ponix in hand and the Arvata in graveyard. That's going to get back to our side of the field, the Spell Negator and the Little Birdie Boy. We'll use the Little Birdie Boy to get a copy of Sanctuary of the Fire Kings and Fire King Island, then we'll activate Snake Eye in order to summon an XL. We'll activate the effect of the XL, that's going to grab us from deck to hand another Little Birdie Boy, and then we'll draw a card off the top of our deck as well. We'll use FKI here in order to destroy the bird in our hand for a Garunix, and we'll trigger the effect of the Garunix summoning itself and activating its effect again to bin a copy of Kirin. Kirin will trigger here, bringing back this copy of Arvata, and finally we'll end on an XL for a Flamberge Dragon, going to battle phase for well, 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 well over lethal. The box will never get a chance to make an appearance. So it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing Tier Lament, and we have opened two hand traps, so I'm feeling pretty good about our chances. 
They're going to begin with a copy of, unsurprisingly, Scream, followed by Rhino Heart. They'll activate the effect of the Rhino Heart, and this is probably worth imperming. We just have to hope they don't get lucky, I think. And they got insanely lucky. Okay, they're going to go for Celiac here for Tier Laments Cash Tira, then activate Malicious to summon it from deck before they go for the Cash Tira mills. They're going to go Tier Cash and try to mill. We will Effect Veiler this, but that puts us on a three-card hand versus a seven-card setup. <laughs> okay, let's see what we can do. We'll begin with a copy of Ponyx. That's going to trigger Scream. They're going to send from, oh, Deck to Graveyard another Rhino heart that's nothing we'll go for the sanctuary of the fire kings here they will heartbeat in response and then we'll activate fire king island we'll use fire king island in order to pop this copy of ponix and grab a copy of garunix summoning it afterwards we'll trigger the effect of the garunix walk directly into a tier limit celiac and now i think we're just chilling <laughs> they're gonna go for tier cash and of course they hit a shiren but thankfully there's nothing they can make with it yet so it's just mud dragon we'll attack over this copy of rhino heart and i'm feeling pretty good about this. In standby phase, we get to trigger the effect of the Ponix in Graveyard, grab it back to hand. They normal summon a Mudora and make an Abyss Dweller, which is quite strong against us, but we can just walk over it and wait a turn. We're going to go for this uh, Ponix, then we'll activate the effect of the Ponix in order to grab from deck to hand the Sanctuary. We'll activate Kieran's effect, summoning it, and then we'll activate Bayrong's effect, summoning it as well. We'll go to the battle phase, walk over with Bayrong, and get in for a ton of damage. Then in main phase two, we will go ahead and set the Sanctuary, and also we can go for Fire King Island in order to grab from deck to hand another copy of Garunix, which we can special summon here. We'll pass back to our opponent, and thankfully a significant amount of these cards trigger not in the graveyard, but in the graveyard during the standby phase of the next turn. Sorry, Abyss Dweller. So, it's time for game two, and Okay, this one looks pretty much unwinnable. Let's see what can be accomplished here. Our opponents going first are going to begin with a copy of Fenrir. That Fenrir is going to grab from deck to hand a copy of the one, the only... Tier Lament Cash Tira. From here, they're going to go Pellerino into Shiren, and then use Shiren's effect alongside the effect of Tier Cash and Scream and Rhino Heart. They're going to grab Celiac and mill a couple of cards and special the Rhino Heart. One of the cards they milled was Trivi Karma. Uh, we're going to infinite and permanence this Rhino Heart here. I think just hoping to hit the guarantee is better than anything else we could be doing. They'll go for Trivi Karma here, and then afterwards, they're going to fire this copy of Tier Lament Scream, normal summon a Rhino Heart, and trigger the effect of the Tier Lament Scream, overlaying for a Bahamut Shark. These were pretty low impact mills after the big ones, so I feel pretty good about this. They're telegraphing the Super Poly here at least a little bit, but the Druid Swarm kind of checks the entire board. We'll go to battle and walk over this copy of Totally Awesome before the Scream can kick in. They're going to grab a card from deck to hand, then we'll go FKI in main phase two. We'll activate the effect, and we will pop this Bayrong in hand. We'll special this Garunix then afterwards. That's going to trigger the effect of the Scream. We'll trigger the effect of the Garunix as well, and uh, they will go for a Celiac Engrave. We're going to link off for a Mascarena. We're going to go Druid Swarm, eat the Cross Sheep, then we'll set one card into the uh, pretty known copy of Super Poly. They're going to make Mud Dragon here. We're going to go for a Druid Swarm on their activating Shiren, but they will chain Tear Cash, banishing the Shiren, which uh, I don't know. I mean, retains the Druid Swarm in my hand. I feel pretty good about it. Uh, they are going to activate the effect of the Pellerino, eat our back row, and this is a disastrous position to be in, of course. Uh, we're going to go for the Ponix in standby. We get it back to our hand. They're going to normal summon a Merly and then activate the effect of the Scream, milling a couple. Uh, but going for Meta Noise here, getting back the Rhino Heart isn't fantastic. They'll go Keldo here in order to shuffle three cards back, and unfortunately, for me that includes a card that will trigger Pellerino killing the Fire King Island. They'll go to battle phase but this isn't lethal. They'll have to commit to this copy of Super Poly but they know we have a Druid Swarm in hand to body block so it's not even particularly good. We'll draw for turn and it's one of the best cards remaining in our deck. We'll go for Wanted. We'll grab a copy of Dia Bellstar. We'll go Ponix next grabbing a copy of the Continuous. We will activate Sanctuary of the Fire Kings for Fire King Island and we'll go get ourselves a copy of Garunix from deck to hand. We'll special summon the Garunix from Graveyard and then afterwards we'll trigger the effect of the Garunix in order to bin a Kirin. We'll trigger the effect of the Kirin to summon the Garunix from our hand, and then we'll get rid of that Mud Dragon. We'll go for Dia Bellstar afterwards, setting a copy of Snake Eye. We're going to go to combat here, walking over for 11 and 12 before in main phase 2, going for the Snake Eye and getting ourselves a copy of XL. We'll trigger the effect of the XL in order to grab a Ponix, and then we'll activate the effect of the Wanted in Graveyard to draw a card. That's not a bad one. We'll go into a Flamberge, and then of course the Sunlight Wolf trigger the effect of the Flamberge to summon two monsters, one of which will trigger the Sunlight Wolf to grab back this copy of Kieran. We'll go Unicorn here, pitching the Continuous, which gives our opponent a really good havenous opportunity they mill three and they're not bad ones but they don't have a lot left we'll go sp little knight here in order to get rid of the scream and pass back to our opponent they'll draw for turn and they're just going to go combat here they don't really have a convincing out to the druid swarm in our hand they're going to normal summon the rhino heart realize they can't contest it and concede so we're back with the deck and wow it's been a hot minute since we saw a list take four wins and dip let's do the pros and cons first the pros one the deck has a fairly compact engine, which allows you to slot in supplemental engines like Tri-Brigade, or just sit on a plethora of board breakers. Two, having both a low to the ground one card combo and a higher impact 1.5 card combo means the deck can play safely into Nibiru or go deeper for multiple interrupts, and it only gets better with Promethean Princess and Populous coming out soon.
And three, it's cheap. For now. I know you're eyeing my wife, but don't worry, grabbing three structure decks and some Dogmatica cards still makes a fairly competent deck if you can't afford a Dia Bell Star. And the cons. One, this deck's in-engine interrupts minus Arvata are destruction-based, which can put it into precarious positions when interrupts are detrimental, against things like Unchained or Tier Lament. Two, it's often going to have a really rough time playing into Droll and Lockbird. Being unable to use Fire King Island after searching the Continuous Spell can leave you on extremely underwhelming boards or lower the ceiling of a Diabell Star combo notably. And three, it's got a weakness to Graveyard Hate. Things like Dweller and the Shufflers, which both come up in this format somewhat often, can be a real problem. Overall, Fire King's Return is certainly thematic. They were dead, and now they've been reborn. After new releases, expect this deck to show up as a contender, but honestly, plan for it now as well. Thanks so much for watching. A huge shout out to all of my patrons, but specifically, Elena Tincher, Alex Perea, Allison Elliott, Bacon for Hire, Brett Henry, Kenor, Da Bears, Darkmaster Zork, Derpin Dragon, DJ Elephant, John Piet, Jordan Koontz, King Magic Ruler, Nightmare, Legal Rights, Lockstone, Luis Hernandez, Matthew M. DeRezzo, MBT Play Medolce, Melfi Stan, Mike Carlotti, Puffins of Doom, Rose Lapine, Solar Flare the Ricka Queen, Storm King 01, Troy Says Buy Erasure is Gay, Vincent Storm, Who's Nick, Wonder Waffle, Yuki, and Your Socks Are Moist Again. Couldn't do it without you.